Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today we are going to be working in the cut flower garden. We are going to start the process of lifting our dahlias, which I cannot believe it's already that time. It felt like it was just summer and then we quickly had our first frost a couple of nights ago, which kind of sucked because I was waiting for my mom to arrive. She just moved here from Brazil a couple of days ago and I was hoping that she'd get to see how beautiful they were looking, but she just missed it by a day, but at least I cut her some blooms and she's enjoying those in her room right now. But she and I actually came out here and we started to cut down the dahlias. I'll show you that. We are going to just work on lifting some of them up today. I'll show you my process. We'll talk a little bit about storing your dahlias. I've done detailed videos on both processes, which I will link down below in the description box. And then we'll do a separate video on dividing, which can be a little bit daunting if you're new to it but it's not scary i promise i'll walk you through the whole process none of this should be scary for you you're going to do great i have confidence in you you got this it's i know it's a little bit like scary the first year you do it but anyways i like to lift my dahlias up every year even though technically i can't leave them in the ground because i like to rotate them through i like to give away the tubers the ones that i have too many of which you know, you can really never really have too many dahlias in my opinion. But anyway, so I'm going to show you what you're going to need today just for the lifting. I'll show you a little bit about storing them and then we'll again, we'll focus on dividing them on a whole separate video. So let's just jump right in. These are the tools that I have in my dahlia digging toolbox, as I like to call it. I use pruners, loppers, and a pitchfork. I like to use this little small pitchfork. We do have a big one. I just feel like I have more control with this little guy. Loppers you can use when you have the thicker stalks where your pruners just can't get around. So this is a handy tool to have. And then pruners because you're going to be cutting them down. It's going to make lifting a lot easier once you begin. Now before you get into digging up your dahlias, a lot of you ask, do I have to dig up my dahlias? And the answer is no. If you live in zones eight or above, you're safe to leave them in the ground. However, I do recommend you cover them with tarp, use some mulch, leaf mulch, something to insulate them on top of the tarp or underneath the tarp. And that should keep them safe all season long. I have a quick video um, that I filmed last year of me I think, yeah, it was my neighbor's dahlias. I went ahead and we overwintered them in the ground. They came back beautifully. I will say the years that I have left our dahlias in the ground, they do come back stronger. They come back bigger. They are the first ones to bloom. So there is a benefit to that. However, I like to rotate my dahlias every year. I, there are some that I grow that I'm like, uh, I love you, but I'm going to move you either to the landscape or I'm going to give more of them away and maybe just not grow as much of that of that one specific variety that I didn't love. So there's just, you know, benefits to both. There are a lot of gardeners that have stored their dahlias or they've left their dahlias in the ground that lives in zones uh, six and seven. I don't have experience doing that, so I don't want to talk to it, but you can. If you are going to do that, I recommend you use a lot of mulch or a lot of like leaf mulch to really insulate them. In our zone, we live here in the Pacific Northwest here in Oregon, and it gets really, really wet. So the one thing that I've noticed the years that I have left some of them in the ground, they can rot because of all of that rain. However, our, our dahlia beds have really well-drained soil. So it doesn't hold water too much, which helps a lot. But for me, I just think lifting them is so much better for me because again, I like to rotate them out. And it's like one of those processes that I know it's not fun. It's wet, it's cold you're miserable kind of doing it but the upside of it is you get to see how many new tubers you're going to have which is so exciting it's almost like christmas for gardeners or a feel of dahlias i get so excited like when i dig up a variety and there's like 5 10 15 sometimes 20 new tubers from that one that you planted earlier in the spring so it's very exciting in my opinion to dig up your your dahlia so again, those are just some things to think about whether or not you're going to lift them or if you're gonna to try to leave them in the ground. Maybe leave some varieties that you don't mind losing and just experiment if, if that's like a process that will work in your zone or for you. But again, for me, I just, 
I like lifting them up. So let's get into it. I'll show you a close up of what you're going to do. I've already kind of started this bed and then we will just start lifting some of them up. You can see we've already started to cut down all of our dahlias and I'm going to do this bed by bed. That way it doesn't get too overwhelming. And we are, we do have rain in the forecast in the next couple of days. And what I don't want to do is if you look here, you can see that the dahlia stalks are hollow when you cut them down. If it rains too much and the rain gets in here, they start rotting a lot quicker. So for me, it's just a lot easier to just do one bed at a time. That way it's not getting too crazy and I'm not rushing to do everything all in one day. So my mom and I came out here yesterday and we cut them down. There are a couple of them that the labels fell off. A couple of them we broke the stalks down, but that's okay. I, I took notes. I'll come out here and label the rest. But when you cut down your dahlias, I usually leave, oh, maybe 12 inches, maybe 12 or a little bit more, a little bit less on some of them. And this is going to help you really lift them. What you're not going to want to do is pull them up because that will just cause these to break. But I like to keep them like this because again, it's just easier to lift them up. And then once we start dividing them, or if you're going to store them like this as clumps, which we'll talk about that in a little bit, then you can cut them down a little bit lower. But this way, it's just a lot easier when you're actually working and you're, you know, just moving along, getting them up, getting them lifted, washing them, or you're going to store them. It just makes your life a lot easier to do it this way. So that is going to be step one, cutting them down to about 12 to 16 inches. That way you have something nice to grip when you're lifting them up. All right, step two is getting your pitchfork and you wanna make sure you're not getting too close to the stalk because if you go down this way, you're going to end up puncturing those tubers. And the reason why we use a pitchfork is because the tubers can sometimes just slip right through versus using a shovel, you probably have a higher chance of puncturing them. With a pitchfork, it's a little bit more forgiving and you're less likely to puncture right through them. But you want to move away from your clump or from your dahlia stalk I would say maybe like, I don't know, eight to 10 inches, because once these start growing during the season, they do spread out. And you have seen me dig up some clumps that have like, I don't know, I think one of them had 20 new tubers and it was just massive. So you really never know how big these clumps are going to be. So I really give myself plenty of space to dig them up. So you get right here and then you're going to just push down and then you're going to go deep because you don't know how deep those tubers are. And then you're going to start lifting. And I start shaking the soil off just a little bit like that. Perfect. So that kind of gives me a little bit of a starting point. And then I move some of the soil away. Oh, look, I can start to see them. And then that's when I come in, shake it off. Oh, yeah. this one's heavy. Oh, this one didn't form too many. This one's polka. And there you go. You see? So there is our first official clump of the season. You'll notice this, this big one, that is going to be the mother tuber. That is the one you planted and all of these little guys are the babies she just made. So that is in a nutshell, step two. Let's do this one right here. This is a breakout and this one was a massive flower, but let's see how it did as far as production. And sometimes you might need to go around a couple of times to really get in there. And there will be instances that you puncture those tubers and you break them off and it's okay. It's sad, but it's just kind of the name of the game. Oh yeah. That made a very nice clump. Look at that. How cool is that? 
what a fun investment, right? Like <laughs> this is probably one of those like true pay off types of investments. You, you place one or you plant one and you're almost guaranteed to have many more. This is the type of investment I like. It's almost a guarantee and I love that. Let's do another one, but let me first cut off this one. I kept it because I wanna keep the seed pod on this dahlia. You can see I put a little sachet on there because I wanted to see if this is going to make any seeds. So we'll cut that. And let's go ahead and remove one of my biggest producers, which was Sandra. Let's give her plenty of room. Wait, she's making us work for it. Let me go on the other side. And you don't want to yank on this too much. Oh yeah. That looks good. Very good. Oh, these tubers are so beautiful. I love it. All right, let's do another one. All right, this one was Sweet Sane, or San, probably my favorite this year. Let's see how she looks. It came out nicely. Oi, it's heavy. Here we go. Oh yeah. There's the mother tuber right there. I can still see a little bit of my writing when I labeled it. And here's a good example of one that got punctured or it broke, which I'm not going to be sad about. It's okay. What I will do is when I'm dividing this, oh, you know what? This looks just like a feeder. Yeah, this is a feeder tuber anyway. So I'm not worried about it. A feeder tuber is usually a tuber that is attached to another tuber. So like here's a good example of one. You see how this is one tuber and then it has this feeder tuber. This is not going to be a viable tuber. So I will actually just cut these right off um, because those aren't going to have eyes. So it's a little bit deceiving and we'll talk more about that when we divide this one. But like I said, here's an example of one that just broke during us digging it, which is fine because if it was a viable tuber, what I would do is when I'm dividing it, I would cut it right here. Let that kind of scab over for a couple of days. So cut this whole part off. In fact, why don't I just show you? Let me get my pruners. So I would take my clean pruners and I would cut this right here just like that and then I would divide this if it had a viable eye and a good neck and all the good stuff throw this part away I would let this cab over look at that how beautiful this would heal over and it would be perfectly fine for next year. And let's do one more. Let's do Bacardi here. This one you can see has multiple stalks coming out of it. It was a really good producer too. And go far, a little further back. Put our pitchfork in. Ooh. It's always exciting because you just don't know what you're gonna <laughs> what you're gonna have. It's like Christmas. Make sure we don't lose that little tag. Oh yeah, that feels really nice. But 
Let's see what that looks like. And I try to remove as much of the soil as I can before I take it to my wash station. Just a little bit less of a mess that way. So this one I can tell made a lot of skinny little tubers as you can see. So when I divide this, I may just divide it into a few little clumps instead of individual little tubers. But once we get this washed, we'll have a better idea of what's going on. All right, that is step two, is to use your pitchfork to dig them up out of the soil. Now for step three, you have to decide, are you going to store your dahlia clumps or as clumps, or are you going to divide them throughout the season? For me, I like to divide them now just because it saves a lot more room. I don't have a ton of space to, you know, stack up a bunch of crates and leave them all winter long and then divide them in the springtime. That is a really great way of doing it. In that case, I'll show you what to do. But for me, again, I just like to divide them and I'll show you what I do next before I do that. But if you are going to store them and then you're going to divide them in the springtime, the upside of doing that is that the eyes become more visible. So it's easier to divide. I honestly with me like I don't find it easier or harder to do it now versus then but that's just a personal preference and if you have the space to leave them as clumps great you can totally do that but for me I like to divide them so if you are going to store them as clumps you are okay to leave a little bit of soil on there so I'll show you what that looks like so here's a good example if you're going to store this as a clump I would just continue removing a little bit more of the soil around these roots here I would probably cut these roots off I'll show you that and then you can store them in a crate and I'll show you that in a minute however if you're going to divide them then I recommend washing all of the soil off that's just going to make dividing them a lot easier because you're going to be able to see the eyes in fact I already see an eye on this one right here but anyways, that is going to make it a lot easier for you to identify those eyes. And then we will let them dry for about a day inside. And then we will store them in vermiculite, kind of like a lasagna. We'll just layer them and layer them and layer them in our plastic containers. And that just goes by really, really easily. So let me show you how I like to rinse these off. And then I'll show you one where you just leave it together and then where you should store it. I don't have my washing station set up yet, so I'm just going to show you on the grass here how to rinse them off if you decide to divide them. Again, it's easier to wash them off, get all of the soil off before dividing them. So I just wanna use a hose that has a jet setting to really get into all of the nooks and crannies to wash away that soil. And of course, I just splattered all over my face. So let me just get here. Again, this is a dirty, wet process and you just have to embrace it. <laughs> There's no way around it. And it's a lot easier if you do this, like at a table, which is usually what I do. I just have a station set up. So I'm gonna rinse it off, make sure all of that soil is gone. Let's see, that looks good. A little bit over here. Perfect, just like that. You see how clean and cute she looks? Next, I'm just going to cut down the stalk a little bit more, just like that. And even maybe just a little bit more. And there you go. So this one is going to be ready to divide. I'll probably just let it dry inside for the next 24 hours before I start dividing it. You can start dividing it now. Now you wanna make sure you don't leave these outside. Your clumps or your tubers have to be stored in an area that stays between 40 and 50 degrees. A lot of people make the mistake of putting them in their garage floor. What happens is the concrete fluctuates in temperature throughout the day, throughout the night. So that's not the best place to store it. I'm going to put ours in our, probably in our dining room, line the floor with painter's paper, put them there, let them dry, and then just take them one by one as I'm dividing them. And then once I decide to store them, or once I divide them, I'll store them in an area that stays between 40 and 50 degrees. Humidity is also important. Ideally, you want to keep them 
in the area that stays a minimum of 70% humidity. To be honest, I never check. I check on my tubers every few weeks as I'm storing them, but if you have a way to control your humidity between 70 and 90, that's ideal for them. But again, I don't, I don't do any of that. I just, <laughs> I go with my heart. I check on them. I never have a problem. And that's pretty much the process that I like to take. Now I will say if you by accident leave them out, which I've done before, which most of the time they're not going to survive and you come to them and you feel that the tubers are rubbery and soft, then they're probably gone. And you can check to see if you cut into the tuber and you see that they're translucent inside, then you know you've already lost them. This one, one over here has a little bit of rot, so I'm going to cut it off. We'll talk about cutting all of this stuff off when we do our dividing video but if i were to cut this off you're going to see that it should look nice and solid inside where if you have one that you accidentally left out it's going to be a lot more translucent and you know it's not going to be a viable tuber anymore so this is the way i would do it if you're going to plan on dividing them now even if you're going to store them you can wash them although it's just not super necessary but you can totally do that especially if you have a lot of soil around because there could be some bugs and it could stay moist and nobody wants, you know, moisture in there when you're storing them. You want to keep them relatively dry and just make sure that you're doing everything to prevent any rot while they're being stored. If you're going to store your dahlias as clumps, what I like to do is take a crate like this. I line it with newspaper or packing paper, whatever you have. And then I pour in my vermiculite like this. Ooh. And I just place them right in there just like that. And I make sure to cover it up before I put in my next one to make sure that they're not really touching. Just like that. Now in either instance, I will always remove the roots just because those get in the way and I just kind of clean them up a little bit like this and again I will also cut them down even further if I'm storing them as clumps to make sure we don't lose our tag here and as clumps I'll go ahead and just fill this whole crate up fill it up with vermiculite that's the material I like to use the most cover it up and keep it in that area again that stays between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Again vermiculite is the medium that I like to use to store our tubers. You can also use peat moss although I don't think I've ever used peat moss before to store our dollies. I don't think I have. I just I'm not a fan of it. I like the vermiculite that works the best for me. You can also use wood shavings which you can get the big bales of it at any feed store. I've talked a little bit about that in a previous video. The only thing with the wood shaving is it's a little bit drier but it totally works if that's like the only thing you can get your hands on too because I know vermiculite especially the fine stuff that we're using is a little bit tricky to get sometimes in the year so wood shavings work just as fine. Again, we'll keep them in the area that stays between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit, whether it's going to be in the crates or, you know, you're going to keep them divided in different containers. Again, what I'll do is I'll do a layer of vermiculite. I'll divide my tubers. I'll put a layer in of the tubers. I'll do another layer of vermiculite, another layer of the tubers. So it's like a lasagna. It works really well and I'll just store them with the lids on the containers. If I see a little bit of condensation, I'll lift the lids off, but I check on the tubers pretty often. I am going to run an experiment this year and store some of them in our shed. I will get a digital thermometer that connects through my phone so I can keep track of the temperature in there. If it gets too cold, I can bring them inside, but we're running out of space inside the house. I'm trying to be creative of where I store them. You can also store them in the attic. That's another great place. Again, just keep that temperature range in mind. If you have a root cellar, great, like great for you. I love that for you because that is the best place to store dahlias because you, ca you can control the temperature, you can control the humidity. I don't have any of that stuff right now. So I just kind of make with what I have and it works just as fine. So you don't need anything fancy to do this, but if you do have a root cellar, that's great. I love that for you, <laughs> but we don't. So anyways, that is step three. 
We will get into all of the nitty gritty stuff about dividing dahlias and storing them after we divide them as well. But if you have any questions between now and our next video, make sure you leave them in the comment sections. That way I can answer them in that next video where we really get into dividing them. But as far as digging them up, storing them now, you have all of the tools. I gave you all of the tips and tricks. You got this. Like I am confident in your ability to do this. All right, well, that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope seeing this process of digging up our dahlias was helpful to you guys. I hope you learned some tips and tricks along the way. Don't be afraid to do this. It's not that scary. You're going to do great. If you have any questions, let me know down below and I'll make sure to answer all of your questions. But it's just nice to get out here and start doing this because I usually wait later in the season to really get into it. And it's always miserable because again, it rains all of the time here. And then I'm just out here in the rain, in the cold, like asking myself, why did I wait for so long? Why didn't I do it on those beautiful, dry, sunny days? So it's just nice to get this done. We'll start working on the other beds as soon as we wrap up the first one. So it doesn't get too overwhelming and too crazy inside the house where we're going to keep them until I start dividing them. So anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today in the garden and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. My mom's out here helping me with the dahlias. We had our frost. Yeah, so I got sad. A job. I My got, mom just landed from Brazil. I have to do this and the, like yep. that. Uh huh. And like that. Yep. Okay. I will. <laughs> we I gotta get her proper there. garden clothes. You see how good I am? Uh huh. Oh. You're great.